In a world completely overwhelmed by ongoing debates as to which adaptation of cinema is better, the West has Hollywood, the East has Bollywood, but in the middle we have the global critic. Greetings, Malicy chaps and chappesses. I'm the Global World Critic. As some of you know, Bollywood has a tendency to do war movies, but they seem to be less plagiaristic. But there are some filmmakers who occasionally use the same backdrop of big budget Hollywood movies. One example I'm referring to is The Rock and Gayamad City Under Threat, which many Indian enthusiasts consider to be the worst remake ever made. Both films follow the same pattern in narrative. A group of police officers and commandos, along with a brilliant but dull scientist, recruit an ex-con who happens to have knowledge of escaping a certain prison in order to help gain entry into the same location to stop a group of rogue soldiers and terrorists from launching chemical weapons. Ugh, couldn't they be any more brainless? Well, let's find out in this comparison. This is The Rock vs. Gayamad. So let's cut to the chase and begin off with Best Action Duo. Now if you've seen both films, you're probably wondering couldn't these guys be any more different? Well let's look at both the ex-cons. In The Rock you have John Patrick Mason played by Sean Connery. What I find fascinating about his character is that his entire story of how he was illegally detained in the US is a complete mystery. You see, he expresses his dislike for the American government, at the same time show no regard for those who are at risk. Oh, it's on the blueprints. I can't. My blueprint was in my head. I was underground for three days, in the dark. It's only until a convert mission involving the US SEALs getting ambushed by the US Marines that one of the FBI officials explains who Mason really is. This man knows our most intimate secrets from the last half century. The alien landing at Roswell, the truth about the JFK assassination. And Mason's angry, he's lethal, he's a trained killer. And he is the only hope that we have got. Kayama, on the other hand, introduces Drachit, played by Ajay Dev Gunn, in the exact same way to Mason. But how is his introduction very different? They introduced him as a mental patient? I mean, come on! He's practically played a similar role in the 1994 film Dilavale. Unlike Mason, much of Ratchet's story is revealed before he became a mental patient. It's only until his girlfriend, Sapna, played by Neha Dabia, who was to have been killed, speaks to him over the radio and that he miraculously gains his sanity back and takes on each terrorist one by one. Hmm. A motive definitely there. Now we have the scientists. In The Rock we have Stanley Goodspeed, played by Nicolas Cage. He is generally shown to be the most hesitant of the group but coincidentally happens to share the same knowledge pattern of history which Mason shares on various occasions. I fear the Greeks even when they bring gifts. Oh, an educated man. This is where I find the duo fascinating to watch. For you see that during their extreme situations they initially bond and help each other out. But you know it was originally a civil war fork. Oh really? Huh. Yeah, wow. You know, I like history too, and maybe when this is all over, you and I can stop by the souvenir shop together. But right now, I just... I just I want to find some rockets. Plus, the only positive I love about Cage is his status quo change. For under Connery's guidance, he becomes less hesitant and tougher when approaching his adversaries. Now, who do you suppose they give Cage's role to to play Rahul in the film Gayama? She <laughs> did Rahul? What? Ashish Jodhari? They chose Ashish Jodhari? I mean, come on! I meet you on the lookout for newcomers and you find this guy? He is by far the weakest character in the entire movie. You're very cute. <laughs> Thanks. But learn to be a man first. 
Even when he fails to impress his girlfriend, Sheetal, played by Rhea Sen, at the same time save her through extreme circumstances, he's still far too hesitant and scared stiff. <laughs> there is practically no character development whatsoever. So for me, this is an easy choice. In terms of character development, mystery, teamwork and change in status quo, Cage and Connery win this round for their roles. Point goes to the West. Now comes the more interesting of the comparisons, it's the villain. Or should I say, villains? <laughs> now both films do have a great choice of actors to portray the villains, but which one of these guys stands out the most? Well, let's have a look at their backstory. In The Rock you have General Frank Hummel played brilliantly by Ed Harris, his character is shown to be one of the most respected men to have served in the U.S. Marines. Three tours in Vietnam, Panama, Grenada, Desert Storm, three Purple Hearts, two Silver Stars, and the Congressional Medal of Jesus. This man is a hero. But what changed, if you may ask? Throughout the years he served in the U.S. Marines, his comrades who died in battle were not honoured for their actions, which caused him to become disenchanted and disgusted with the U.S. government who supposedly chose to forget those who served their country and refused payment for the deceased families. Well, I have choked on these lies my entire career. Well, here and now, the lies stop! In order to try and get their attention, he steals 15 VX poison gas rockets. With the help of his soldiers, seizes control of Alcatraz Island, holding 81 tourists in the process, and threatens to fire the rockets on the San Francisco population if $100 million dollars is not paid to him and his comrades, along with the families whose soldiers died under his command. Now this is where the character becomes more interesting to watch. He believes what he's doing is an act of patriotism, for he wishes to seek justice on those who were denied it in the first place. This is not combat. It's an act of lunacy, General Sir. Personally, I think you're a fucking idiot. Plus you see from his expressions that striking terror in the San Francisco population is the last thing he wants to do. This mission was based on the threat of force. I'm not about to kill 80,000 innocent people. Do you think I'm out of my fucking mind? Now how do you suppose Gayama can top that? Unfortunately, they don't. Instead, we have a group of Pakistani terrorists, the Romani brothers Ali and Abbas, played by Arbaz Khan and Sanjay Kapoor, and Leila, played by Isha Kopika. Unlike Harris, these three have an initial motive and are shown to be more ruthless. Tere paas 24 ghante hain. Samajh gaya. Tu phir bola? Chal bol le. Kabhi kabhi bol bhi liya kar. Aur ha, baaki hum kya kar sakte hain? Iska sample to tu Goregaon ke kuye mein dekh hi chuka hai. Kyun? And yes, you've guessed it. Their motive is to deliberately strike terror in India with a VX poison gas out of religion. So what you have is another pointless war movie, Indians against Pakistanis, Hindus against Muslims. Now for me, this is another easy comparison and my vote goes to Harris. Mainly because the motive he's chosen to get the attention of the supposed corrupt government makes his backstory more fascinating to watch, making you feel why he became a terrorist, so to speak. Point goes to the West. Now comes the more complex of the comparisons, it's the supporting cast. <laughs> now whether you like these two films or you dislike them, you would have to admit they both have a great supporting cast that makes up for some of the flaws. Now even though The Rock primarily focuses on the two main heroes and its main villain, the only problem I have with this movie is that the majority of the supporting cast are shown as figures of authority full of cops and army guys. But to some extent, they do their roles pretty well, as they are the ones who reveal the mysteries and truth behind both Mason and Hummel. Make no mistake, gentlemen, we are in the fight of our lives against maybe the greatest battalion commander in the Vietnam War, I shit you not. Gayamad, I'm afraid to say, makes up for his flaws with its choice of supporting cast. From the supporting cast, you have a mixture of people, corrupt politicians, army officers and civilians, some of whom have a hidden motive. 
अगर फंस गए तो मैं होम मिनिस्टर नहीं रहूंगा समझे की नहीं अगर ये डील हो गई तो आप एम एल खरीद के चीफ मिनिस्टर बन जाएंगे अंकल The female leads are both shown as pillars of strength for the male leads, and with the extra screen time, they help provide the backstories for them both. As much as I think the supporting cast in The Rock is good, I'm going to give this one to Guy Armad. One other reason is the character Akram Sheikh, played by Sunil Shetty. My name is Islam, but my country is Hindustan. That's why I'm going to give Bharat Maa salam. He was by far my favorite character in the movie. Unlike Michael Bien's role as Commander Anderson, who's shown to be a SEAL operative, Shetty's role is shown to be a tough CBI officer of Muslim origin, determined to apprehend the film's main villains, and is shown to be more patriotic, since it's the kind of role he feels more comfortable playing. Point goes to the East. Now it all comes down to the most important factor: it's the story. Now, as I mentioned before, both films take a similar approach in telling the stories using the same similar backdrop. You have a group of terrorists break into a science laboratory bunker to retrieve VX poison gas rockets. They threaten the local government with a deadly ransom. The government send in a SWAT team to take out the terrorists, only to find the team ambushed, leaving an ex-con and a scientist to carry out the mission and defeat the terrorists one by one. But as I said before, the main difference between these two films is motive. In The Rock, it opens with Harris smoking a cigar, having a brief moment remembering the soldiers who died under his command in various different wars. While looking at the depth fulfilled image between himself and his uniform, you immediately assume he's a soldier. But the blurred image of himself signifies there's mystery behind his character. Plus the words he speaks when at his wife's grave immediately draws us into what on earth does he mean? You know I tried everything and I still don't have your attention. As we get into the film, you see that he's fighting for what he feels is injustice done to his former comrades whose deaths were not honored by what he believes is a corrupt US government. It is only during his confrontation with Mason that you see that killing innocent civilians is not in his vocabulary. As Mason claims to good speed Hamel won't do it. He's a soldier, not a murderer. I read it in his eyes. You read his eyes? Oh well, then everything's just fine. In Kayama's, you open with the text "Prisoners of War Camp, Pakistan," and of course, the sudden appearance of the Pakistani flag. In this opening scene, you see the former India soldiers being forced to drink the contaminated water filled with VX poison by Pakistani soldiers. So it becomes their mission, along with the film's main villains, to demonstrate their supremacy over India and Kashmir by unleashing the VX poison gas rockets over widely populated areas. From there, there is no mystery, for the audience will immediately guess this movie will again revolve around India versus Pakistan. Saale chhod police ki taraf ho gaya. Jab baat Hindustan Pakistan ki ho rahi ho, to har Hindustani ek ki taraf hota hai. Man, are these guys desperate or what? It's like they're deliberately trying to piss us off. The other thing that lets the movie down is the backdrop and its heavy use of digital color correction. I guess the filmmakers at the time thought about making this film to look more experimental to offer engagement for its target audience. So, in terms of story and better choice of heroes and villains, I can say hands down, The Rock is the superior film. So there you have it. The Rock beats Gayama in this comparison. I'm the Global World Critic. Until next time, Arjgilier, Alvedar, Mere Desi Loco.